What's up, everybody? New episode of The List. Justin here. This episode, I'm going to talk about WWE finally, finally doing something right. They listen to the fans. They listen to all the outrage. Because a lot of fans are outraged. I can't say I was outraged because I really wasn't. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I wasn't outraged. I just thought it was very stupid. WWE on Monday night, three days ago, decided, or four days, whatever, three, four days ago, decided they were going to name a women's battle royal after Fabulous Moolah. Again, I was not outraged. I just wasn't. I know what she did. I I read some stories. I saw some articles. And she was an awful, awful, old, the uh, crook, an old bitch, and an old cunt is what she was. She was an a-hole. Now, there's a lot of a-holes in wrestling. I put this out on Twitter, I think on Tuesday. There's a lot of a-holes in wrestling. She was one of them. Definitely. She was definitely one of them. I just, I thought it was really stupid. And just really dumb. Why would, why would they name a battle royal after her? They should have just named it in the first place. You should have just named it the WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal. Or you could have named it the Alundra Blaze Battle Royal. The Sherry Martell Battle Royal. The Trish Stratus Battle Royal. Lita Battle Royal. Anybody else. Miss Elizabeth. That would have been cool. But... I guess her family doesn't want her name in wrestling anymore. I don't know. So anyways, and I'll tell you why they changed the name on this episode of the list. It's not because the fans outrage, but it helped. The fans outrage helped. There was a petition started to sign. But they decided to change the name Probably Vince because of the sponsors. The sponsor of WrestleMania. Snickers. A goddamn candy company. Snickers heard about the Fabulous Moolah and they were pretty outraged. So this is according to Newsweek and according to Wrestling Inc. That the WrestleMania 34 sponsor... And Snickers partner company had the following t statement in regards to the backlash surrounding the name of the Battle Royal. It says, we were recently made aware of World Wrestling Entertainment's decision to honor a former wrestler during the upcoming WrestleMania 34 event. Is a principle-based business that is long championed creating inclusion and other stuff that encouraged and empowered everyone to reach their full potential. They said, this is unacceptable. We are encouraging, or we are engaging with WWE, with the WWE to express our disappointment. So they were pissed. Snickers were pissed that WWE would do this. Name a battle royal after a true a-hole in the wrestling business. She was old as hell in the 80s. And she didn't want to give up her spot. And she sucked. As a wrestler, she was awful. From what I saw as a kid, she was god-awful in the 80s probably 20 years past probably 10-20 years past her prime 
shouldn't have been in the ring in the 80s, but she didn't want to give up her spot. And she did everything in her power to hold everybody else back. She tried to hold back Wendy Richter, did a screw job against her in the 80s. Tried to hold down a lot of women. She would train. She'd pimp them out. Sell them. For, and steal their money also. Steal their check. Their paydays. She would take it. Not good. So she was just an awful. Awful human. Awful human being. She wasn't even human. She was a fucking monster a-hole. So also it says fans, but the main thing is, it's a good thing. WWE changed the name of the Battle Royal because they should have never named it after her in the first place. That was a big mistake. But I said on Twitter, you can rant all you want about it. I said, it's Vince's company, and he's not going to change the name of it. Until, <clears throat> until sponsors get involved, and Snickers was pissed, and they're the sponsor of WrestleMania. So when sponsors get involved, then Vince actually listens, and does the right thing. It says fans also were encouraging each other to contact WWE and the WrestleMania sponsors to let them know about Moolah's past and the and their issue with the Battle Royal name. Stephanie McMahon posted a tweet about the name change. And Stephanie probably loved Fabulous Moolah. And she probably doesn't believe what she did. But she did it. It's true. Uh, Stephanie, she's she's delusional when it comes to women's wrestling. She doesn't know what she's talking about. I don't think she does. Her husband does, but not her. And yes, Stephanie, I believe, supports the women's division and the women, but I don't think she gets it. She doesn't understand it. She writes, thank you, WWE Universe, for using your voice. This is one of her tweets from today, 3.07 p.m. Thank you, WWE Universe, for using your voice. What remains most important is that the WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal will be a historic match. Yes, it will be. And is part of WWE's unwavering commitment to our women's division. I hope that's true. Because I love women's wrestling. And all the women in the company are pretty damn good. Except for Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. So then after that she writes, Hashtag women's evolution, hashtag change the name. Well, Stephanie, Triple H, somebody else in the company backstage, why didn't you tell Vince this is not a good idea to name a battle royal after her because of her past? And look, she's been dead for years. Fabulous Moolah's been dead and buried. Hopefully she got eaten by worms. And she's nothing now but bones. I don't know if she's cremated. I don't care. Uh, I don't know if she's buried or not. But if she was, I would like to piss on her grave. So anyways, that's from Stephanie. And there's another article about it. It says a fan, some fans were so upset they started a petition to have the name changed. The petition nearly received 10,000 signatures. WWE seems to be aware of the backlash from the fans now as they turned off commenting abilities on their YouTube video about the Battle Royal. I also saw when uh, they tweeted out that short tribute video to Fabulous Moolah talking about her career and the current women. I've, 
Brooklyn feels so bad for the current women on the roster had to talk good about her. Because she wasn't good. She wasn't good in the ring. She wasn't a good person. She's an evil bastard. Evil cunt. She, again, wasn't a good worker. Wasn't a good person. And, uh... She's just a rotten old lady. That wouldn't leave in the 80s. Thank God Vince got rid of her. 1987... After WrestleMania 3, I didn't see her anymore on TV. He got rid of her, I think, for years and years. She wasn't around. After WrestleMania 3, I didn't see Fabulous Moolah appear again until, like, 94, 95, when she's put in the Hall of Fame. Or whatever, 96. I don't know when she's put in, and I don't care. Now, Fabulous Moolah, she should actually be thrown out of the Hall of Fame, if you're asking me. I mean, I'm not for uh, I'm not for Jimmy Snuka being in there, because that guy's a murderer. Murdered his girlfriend in the 80s, early 80s. And I'm not for Trump being in there, but uh, at least Trump didn't pimp people out like fabulous moolah has but trump you're gonna get what's coming to you very soon your karma is coming to you and i believe you or someone in your family is going to jail anyways moolah should be taken out snooker should be taken out and uh that's what i think so it goes on to say so basically, the name has changed. I don't know. Again, Vince did this. Vince wanted to name it the Fabulous Moolah Battle Royal because he loved her. And I guess what she did for his company. And I don't know if Vince was aware of what she did. Probably not. Because the guy was busy running his own company. Some of the other uh, current women, like Bailey, Sasha, Natalia, they tweeted stuff out about the Fabulous Moolah Battle Royal. They retweeted her video package, and they probably didn't know. The current women probably didn't know about Moolah's past and what an awful, evil cunt she was. They probably didn't know, so I don't blame them. I'm not going to attack them for t re doing that. Because they're on the road so damn much, they probably weren't aware of what she did. Because they're busy. They're on the road, like, every year, probably over 300 days. So how would they know? So anyways, it's a good thing. It's a good thing WWE has woke up. Listen to the fans. And a lot of times they can do stuff where a lot of fans believe WWE doesn't care about the fans. They don't listen to the fans. Well, this time they listened. Only, my opinion, only because a sponsor probably contacted them. Snickers probably contacted them and they were pissed. Saying we're not going to sponsor WrestleMania if you call it the Fabulous Moolah Battle Royal. But again, a lot of fans are frustrated. A lot of times with WWE, a lot of fans bash them and are frustrated. But most of the time, they are good to the fans. I mean, just look at WWE Network. You only got to pay $9.99 for pay-per-views. My opinion, that's being good to the fans. That's being good to their fans. Because they could make it 20 bucks a month or something or more. So anyways, Fabulous Moolah, rot, burn in hell. Hopefully you're in hell. That's all I got to say about her. Uh, next thing on the list I'm going to talk about is sports related. 
my Green Bay Packers free agency and also releasing a very great player. The guy was great. I'm not sure a lot. I think he's with the Packers for 10 years. The guy is an awesome player. Guy's a great guy. Off the field. Never got in trouble. Was great to the community in Green Bay. Who am I talking about? They released Jordy Nelson. Guy was a great receiver. For probably 9, 10 years. Yeah, last year he wasn't that good. But that's... Be, and he had that many yards or catches. But that's... I blame that on Aaron Rodgers being out for two months and longer. He was out. So that's why Nelson's numbers were down. That's my opinion. Nelson, the guy still has it. And I don't know who he's going to sign with. He visited the Raiders. He's visiting the Saints. And he's visiting... I, for, I forget the other team. So Jordy Nelson might sign with the Raiders or Saints and another team. Uh, Jordy Nelson just please don't go to the Bears or the Vikings or the Lions. Do not go to them because I don't want to see you in their uniforms because they're all three rivals of the Packers. So Jordy Nelson, I just want to say he was released. I was pretty damn sad about it. I I didn't really understand it. But now I do. So I just want to say thank you, Jordy Nelson. You played your heart out for the Packers. You gave us everything you had. And you got to win a Super Bowl with the Packers. So uh, it was a business decision. Uh, at least, uh, at least we got Jimmy Graham. I mean, yes, Nelson leaving is sad, but we're getting Jimmy Graham, pretty damn good tight end, still a good player. The guy's still young; I believe he's thirty-one. Guy probably says two, three years of uh, good football left in him in his prime. Now, I don't know if uh, Jimmy Graham, I don't know if he's faster than Jordy Nelson. I don't know. Sadly, Nelson tore his ACL two seasons ago. I don't know if Jimmy Graham ever has. I believe he's had bicep injuries or something. But Jimmy Graham, the guy's still a good player. The guy's still in his prime. The guy's really good in the red zone. I believe he had nine or eight touchdowns last year in the red zone with Seattle. This year, playing with Aaron Rodgers, hopefully Jimmy Graham goes off, runs wild. Hopefully the guy is like 15 touchdowns. And he should be able to get that with Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers can throw that uh, back shoulder pass perfectly. The guy's accuracy is pretty much perfect so hopefully I'm really hoping Jimmy Graham has a great great season I also hope Jordy Nelson has a great season wherever he goes it was reported Jimmy Graham was going to go back and sign with the Saints play with Drew Brees again they could have been reunited but no he decided to come to the Packers Thank God, I'm happy about it, because I love the Packers. Packers are my team, and they would still be my team if I did not live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but I grew up a Packers fan. If you grow up in Wisconsin, you basically, by uh, watching the Packers every Sunday is like religion. So, I'm happy Jimmy Graham's with the Packers, and I wish Jordy Nelson, wherever he goes, whoever he signs with, I wish him the best of luck. And Packers also signed a, I believe, defensive lineman. I forget the guy's name, but he was in, with the Jets. 
last year, and he's pretty good. So it says right here, the Packers on their Twitter account, it announces the Packers have signed defensive lineman Muhammad Wilkerson. I think the guy's a good player. Jets cut him because they didn't want to pay him all, all his contract, I guess. So they signed defensive lineman Muhammad Wilkerson. That's good. Hopefully he helps the Packers' defense with Clay Matthews playing on the, the defensive line with him. And they get cornerback. They sign Muhammad Wilkerson. They get cornerback Herb Waters. I don't know where Herb Walk Herb Wat Waters was. I think it might have been with the Colts. If I look him up. And they trade cornerback Demarius Randall to the Cleveland Browns for quarterback Deshaun Kaiser. That's a weird move. I mean, Demarius Randall, the guy had talent. Demarius Randall, the guy did have talent, but the guy's immature, in my opinion. The guy's a immature hothead. The guy gave up a lot of big plays. He did have some good plays. I remember last year, Demarius Randall had a really good interception in Dallas against Cowboys. He ran it back for a touchdown. But the guy was kind of, I believe the Packers thought he was a cancer to the locker room. So they want to get rid of him. That's a smart move. Kind of surprising. Cleveland traded a, their quarterback, Deshaun Kaiser. I guess they think they're going to get a new quarterback in the first round of the draft. I don't know if they're going to get... I believe they got the first round pick because they didn't win a game. So Cleveland trades Deshaun Kaiser to the Packers. And I guess the Browns get Demarius Randall. Yeah, Demarius Randall goes to Cleveland, and we get Deshaun Kaiser. So where does that leave uh, Brett Hundley? Where does that leave him? I don't think he's going to want to be a third-string quarterback, and I don't think Deshaun Kaiser is coming in to be a third-string quarterback. So I guess Deshaun Kaiser will be the number two backup because I believe Brett Hundley is going to leave. They're not going to re-sign him. I don't know. But that's a good move. They get Muhammad Wilkerson, Jimmy Graham, Herb Waters, and Deshaun Kaiser. Those are good moves, I think, to make the team better. Not just for the next year, but in the future. But Muhammad Wilkerson, I believe, only signed a one-year contract. So hopefully the guy performs really good and will stay. In Green Bay and get a new contract. Um, what else was I gonna say? Oh yeah, Ted Thompson, former GM. I'm glad that old man is gone because that guy did nothing. That guy would refuse to sign free agents, and it was stupid. Ted Thompson was a stupid GM. The guy was stupid for not going after free agents. So I'm glad that old man is out of power in Green Bay. Thank God Ted Thompson is not the GM because we wouldn't be getting Jimmy Graham and we wouldn't be getting any free agents probably. Ted Thompson, the guy was... The guy was dumb. After the Packers won the Super Bowl 2011 after that, the guy was really dumb and didn't do anything to help my Packers. So Ted Thompson, I believe you're still in the organization, but thank God you're out of power because you sucked as a GM, my opinion. Thank God you're gone. In the beginning, you were okay. For like the first two, three years, you were in power as a GM, you were okay. 
But thank God Ted Thompson is gone. Not the GM anymore. This ends this episode of the list. Bye for now, everybody.